All right, all right, all right. Today, we are going to make our own draft system at home. You might have heard it been called a keg raider, a keyser, or even a temperature control chamber, but at the end of the day, it's all kind of the same thing. We're going to learn how to build this thing on a budget. We're going to talk about getting the perfect pour, the pros and cons of a keg raider versus a keyser. Talk about what to buy. Talk about what not to buy, because one day you're going to be old and your pecker isn't going to work. Mine already doesn't. And you're going to look back at your life and wish you would have started brewing and had your own brewery at your house. And we don't need an intro today. It's just another white guy with a backwards hat and a beard. It doesn't matter if you've seen one of us, you've seen all of us. Nothing matters. Except you better send me a picture of your penis. Before we get into it, I just want to say one thing. My number one advice to home brewing is to get to kegging fast. Bottling sucks. I hate bottling with all of my heart. I'd rather have three some with Carrot Top and Rosie O'Donnell while being force fed tomatoes while a cat is scratching my armpit, all while somebody is hitting me over the head with a baseball bat than have to bottle ever again. And number two, do not buy one of these. They're expensive for starters. I bought one at Costco for $500 back in the day and it couldn't even get colder than 41 degrees. But aside from that, you need to make your own draft system. It's a rite of passage for home brewers. It's an unwritten rule, and the unwritten rules are the best rules. Now, Keyser or Keg Raider? The answer? Well, there's really no right or wrong. There's a lot of small differences, but the main difference is that one you actually drill through the fridge, and the other one you're just building a wooden collar. The CO2 tank, the corny kegs, the faucets, and all that other stuff, they're all the same. I like having a Keg Raider since I can still use the freezer, but it's good to have a Keyser because after you've gained 40 pounds from drinking all this home brew and your wife wants to divorce you, you can easily just unscrew the collar and bring it back to a chest freezer and flip it on Craigslist for $100. Once you start drilling into a stand-up fridge, it's pretty much a keg raider for life. Now, when it comes to building a keyser or a keg raider, try your best to snag your corny kegs, your fridge, and your CO2 tank and regulator all used. This is tough for me because I live in a small city now, but check Craigslist and stuff for these three things. The bigger the city, the more options you have on Craigslist and offer up in Facebook. So I had to buy a five cubic foot magic chef for $175 from Home Depot before tax. The cheapest I've ever seen these ones, these sizes are $150 new. I bought a five gallon tank from a local homebrew store filled with CO2 for $130. I would never pay $100 thirty dollars for a full five gallon tank in san diego but it's slimmer pickings out here in knoxville it's cool to support your only homebrew store in town but they wanted a regulator for a hundred dollars but instead i found one for less than half that price on amazon homebrew stores it's always going to be more expensive but it's good to spend money there and you always kind of go there for an experience but sometimes stuff's just way cheaper online and keep in mind when you're filling up a tank there's two types of co2 food grade which is what we want and industrial co2 which is what the paintballers use there's a lot of weird serial numbers on a co2 Two tank. This book reads like stereo instructions. Listen. But in short, they let you know whether your tank is stainless steel or aluminum. It's going to have the max capacity and where it came from. After doing a little research online, it's five pounds aluminum and was manufactured in Canada. The tank will weigh almost eight pounds when it's empty. So with the five pounds of gas, it should weigh close to 13 pounds, assuming your regulator is not connected. Big shout out to Northern Brewer for coming through with two corny kegs, all the other hoses, posts, and faucets to help me get this channel going again. With a five cubic foot chest freezer, I'll be able to fit two five gallon corny kegs, possibly another 2.5 gallon corny in my CO2 tank, all in the new keyser. Your CO2 tank does not have to be inside your keg grater or keyser. You can put it in there if you have room, but if not, drill another hole and run a hose from the outside. I was out in Asheville a couple weeks ago, partying with the claw hammer barrages and checking out their system, and they have at least a 10 cubic foot chest freezer, maybe even more. They have a ton of beers on draft. Always a good time hanging out with claw hammer and Jesse from the Still It channel from New Zealand. These guys were putting out content while I was pretty much just freeloading, you know, taking up space, drinking free beer, trolling Kyle for his engineering awards and magazine articles people have written about him. You know, I was pretty hungover and I didn't really have any clue what was going on that day, but all I remember is that I couldn't stop staring at Emmett's shirt. Yeah, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't ready for that. But thank you again, guys. Thank you for giving me the keys to your place and letting me crash there all weekend. Can't wait to see you guys next weekend. But back to the tutorial. So keg raider or keysers? Well, keg raiders are much easier to make and you can beat them up more. Throw some stickers all over it, hit it with some primer and some paint chalk and build a menu. I'm not saying you can't do that with a keyser, but keysers are generally just kind of look nicer. I've got a tutorial on building a menu that I don't think even one person watched, but I'll post a link to that in the description of this video. Keg raiders, easy fix. Unplug your fridge, 
drill some holes into it, put some support underneath it to support the weight, bricks, books, your dad's Playboy collection, anything at all. Fill the holes up with gap filler and try your best not to get this stuff on your fingers. It's a nightmare to get off. Then connect it to a temperature control and voila. More on temperature control in a minute. Don't go anywhere. Keezers require more. For starters, we need to build a collar, so snag two pieces of two by six. It could really be two by eight or two by 10. We're just gonna do two by six. Get two and a half inch nails and some adhesive. All this stuff works, epoxy, liquid nails, but I like power grab since it's for gluing plastic to wood. Pop off this plastic right here and unscrew the lid. There's gonna be four screws on each side and do not lose these screws. And here's our little LED light. If you have one, just unplug it. You don't need this LED light and it's a whole other project if you wanna create an extension wire. Now this is where you can have as much fun as you want. You can sand it, you can paint it, you can hit it with some teak oil. I'm just gonna sand it, but only sand the part of the collar that's gonna be visible. No reason to sand or teak or paint the inside. And this is a great construction hangover hack. When you're on the job and you're super hungover, just sand stuff all day. Measure out the cuts that you need and drill some pilot holes if need be. And then just sink two screws into each corner. Now, whether you're drilling a fridge or a collar, use seven eighths inch spade bit for your shanks to go through. Don't drill four holes unless you're brewing a ton of beer. Now wipe your fridge down and goose it with glue. Burn a whole bottle on it. More is more on this stuff. Be very liberal and put the collar on and put the lid back on it now and fill it up with a bucket of a few gallons of water to apply pressure. Once you have weight on it, hit it from the outside. Go around and burn it up. I think I used two and a half bottles of glue on this. Wipe it off, get it off the plastic. No need to really worry about it getting on the wood and making it look perfectly. You can always just sand this down later. Now wait an entire day for this stuff to dry. Hit it in the inside corners in the morning and anywhere else. The better you seal it, the lower your electricity bill will be. I had to add some tape on this side of it to make it flush. And once you have peace of mind sealing it, drill the hinges back into your collar and there you have it. Congratulations, you just made a draft beer system at home. Couple pointers, always use Teflon tape if there's a thread. It doesn't matter if it's liquid or gas. And always use hose clamps if you're dealing with barbs. If you're having a hard time getting your 3 16 inch beer line connected, dip the hose into 130 degrees Fahrenheit of water to loosen it up. And never just use your hand to fasten. Always secure everything with a wrench. I got a six inch wrench and an eight inch wrench. If you plan on having more than one beer at the same time, snag one of these. And I'm using the screws from the LED light to connect it to the collar. My only fuss is that my beer line is only five feet. To get the perfect pour, you want at least eight feet of beer line. I'll keep you posted on the live stream whether I'm getting over pours or not. And when dealing with kegging, always look and listen for leaks. Kill the power of the fridge so the motor can't go and you can hear the leaks hissing. I don't hear a hiss. I don't hear anything. And then spray it with a bottle of star sand or star sand solution to see if you have bubbles. No bubbles means no leaks. I used to use a drip tray, but it was stupid. I still spilt beer all over the floor and I'd always just forget to clean it. So there was always this nasty blue waffle thing that would build up. Just use a trash can. It works way better. Two reasons I like having keezers because my old door on my keg raider would pop open from time to time. I don't know if something was pushing on it or maybe it got too cold in the winter or too hot in the summer, but it would open up and I didn't like that but it's not gonna happen with the keezer. You can always just use it as a table too. Put some tools on it, your home brewing equipment on it, live your life. Another thing that I like about having a keezer is you can create custom tap handles that are larger. I tried this on my keg raider, but it sucked when I had to unscrew them to get into my freezer to get hops out. Check out the Brew Show's channel if you wanna make custom tap handles. Now here's the real MVP, the key to the city, the temperature control. I've got an anvil and an inkbird, about $30-ish. They both work great. Plug the temperature control into the wall and the freezer into the temperature control. If you're making lagers, set it to 40 degrees, but we're doing a draft beer system, so we're gonna set it to 35 degrees with a plus or minus difference of two degrees. So when the freezer hits 33, it's gonna turn off. Then when it hits 37, it's gonna turn on. Sneak the thermometer wire through the back of the keezer or the front of your keg grater and just close the door on it. Set your PSI to 10 or 12 and you're drinking delicious homebrew in a couple days or force carb it and you're drinking in 30 minutes. What do you guys prefer though? You you guys prefer keezers or keg raiders? Let me know in the comments section. Sometimes you can learn more in the comments section than you can do the video itself. Thanks for watching this video. Cheers to eating good and cheers.